Okay, so on number five here, what we're going to do is, I mean, we've got the three ways we could do this. And I've shown you examples of doing it the first way, which is the full uh, cross product treatment. And I've shown you the third way, which is where you look at like FX and FY, find the moments for those. The second way, I, I haven't really done any illustrations of that for you, but this is a perfect one to do that second method with. All right. So just in case you're like, what method are you talking about? Uh, remember, if we say that a vector is the result of a cross product, then the magnitude of that is also R F sine theta. Okay. So let's dig into this guy here. Obviously, we can see where our vector F is. It's right here. Piece of cake. But R is a little tricky. And at first guess, you might think, well, R is just sitting in there at 30 degrees. Uh, careful. Often, we are going to ignore the thickness of a beam. But if it gives you the thickness of a beam, that's like a huge clue. It's hitting you over the head. Take this into consideration, okay? That's what it's saying. You have to account for the fact that the beam has a thickness. Now, that means then O is down here in the corner. We got, we have to put our R vector all the way up to here. Okay, all the way up to this. So there's R, just like that. So if we're going to use RF sine theta, then we have to figure out theta. And theta is going to be this whole angle right in here, which you can see is going to be composed of that 20 degree angle plus this angle here, which is going to be our 30 degree angle, plus whatever this tiny little angle is right inside there. Okay, so if we can figure that out, then we're in business. All right. R is super easy to get at. R is just going to be square root of 5 squared plus 0.5 squared. And um, that turns out to be 5.025, okay? And so uh, we know F is 600 pounds. Okay, so how are we going to get that angle there? Well, that little tiny angle that I drew in there is blue, the super small angle there. Uh, why don't we call that phi? And that's also inside here. So phi is our angle right in there like that. and what we can know then is that the tangent of phi is going to be 0.5 over 5, okay? So it's just the rise over the run. It's just a simple slope opposite over adjacent. And if you work out what phi is on your calculator, then what you get is 5.71 degrees, okay? There we go. No, we know R, we know F, we know the teeny tiny angle inside there. So we can package it all together at this point. So M is going to be the R, which is 5.025 times F, which was 600. Times the sine of the 20 degree angle plus the 30 degree tilt of our beam plus that small angle, 5.71. Okay, of course all those are degrees. There we go. Okay, and uh, once you calculate that, what you're gonna get is 2,491 pounds. Okay, all right. Now, occasionally your book will either give you a force or ask for something and that's, Sorry, that's actually pound feet or foot pounds. Um, 
Occasionally, your book will ask for a unit in what of kip, K-I-P. And a kip is simply a thousand pounds. So M, we can say here's 2.491. Kip feet. Okay, so pretty simple there. Um, all right, now let's just talk about the last one real quick. Again, I'm just going to kind of outline it for you. So we've got this 500 Newton force pulling on this curved component. And so if we think about our uh, moment arm comes out here like this. And that looks like it could be pretty tricky to work out that geometry. And and, um, and it wouldn't be that bad. But, but it, you know, it wouldn't be a good time. Okay. It would, wouldn't be a good time. Um, unless you were having trouble sleeping and you're like, uh, I got to do something with my head. Then you could work it out. But um, But what we can do is we can take advantage of the fact that the line of action for the force is very well defined here. And remember that with our moment arm, it doesn't matter as long as we start here and we come out to it. So we can come to any of these places. The value of the moment we get is going to be the same. So why don't we just scoot over here? just like that. Okay. And that's going to enable us to use our expression RF sine theta. Okay. Turn out to be really handy to pull that off that way. Okay. There you go. Don't forget that um, the back of your book has these fundamental problems sketched out for you. In case uh, any, something I had said here didn't make sense or something, you can uh, refer to that as another resource.